Let us all pray. Almighty God, you are the source of all mercy and the giver of comfort. Deal graciously, we pray, with those who are sorrowing this day, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know your love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The congregation may be seated. John Charles Patterson was born to parents Alfred and Eldora Gruenberg Patterson on October 17, 1961, in Bismarck. He was raised and educated in Bismarck, attending Bismarck High School. He spent most of his career as a truck driver for United Van Lines. John married Paula Barry Patterson on March 11, 1983. They went on to have two children, Joshua and Corianne Peter Patterson. One of John's biggest accomplishments was being a father. He treasured his children and embraced every moment with them. He especially loved his role as Papa. John had a charismatic, charismatic personality and always made people around him laugh. He was a social butterfly and made his friends every met made friends everywhere he went. He loved to tinker around in his garage and always seemed to have some sort of project going on. John also loved to plant flowers and strawberries in his raised garden bed. John was a bright spark in this world and will be deeply missed by many. He is now at peace, pain-free, and as free as an eagle. John is survived by his son, Joshua, Patterson, his daughter Corey Ann Patterson, his grandchildren Tucker Geetson, Brody and Macy Patterson, his siblings Nancy and Kent Danielson, Harlan and Deb Patterson, Alan and Shirley Patterson, and Edmund and Sharman Patterson, many nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, cousins, and Mary, many very special friends. John is reunited in heaven with his parents, his brother Stanley, his sister Diane and Dale, an angel grandbaby, as well as several aunts, uncles, and cousins. God bless your memories of John. At this time, Corey is going to have a eulogy. Oh, my sweet daddy-o. Where do I begin? My entire life is filled with beautiful memories with you. You were my first love, my teacher, my support, my greatest listener, my biggest fan, my hero, my everything. My fondest and most treasured memory of you was when I was a little girl. I remember both of us sitting on the couch with the Little Mermaid movie playing in the background. We each had a Barbie doll in our hands and you were bound and determined to teach me how to braid her hair. And you did just that. I remember how you always did my hair. You would always put the biggest bows you could find everywhere we went. You especially loved the clear bows that had real candy inside of them. You always did all the little girl things that I wanted to do, but you also taught me how to be strong and how to fix things on my own. I remember the day Matt told you how I could fix things around his house better than he could. You thought that was hilarious, but I could also see how proud you were of me. You'd do anything for me, and you always did. There are no words for how much I already miss you. 
I feel so blessed that I got to call you my dad. I know life isn't forever, but love is. Love your baby girl. At this time, we're going to ask if anybody wants to tell a story. You can tell it where you are seated. You don't have to stand or anything. Um, I'm going to have the microphones. You have to talk into the microphone. Otherwise, they won't get it on the live stream. So would anybody like to share a story? First of all, I just want to thank everybody for being here. You know, this would mean the world to him. I've got so many memories of my dad that I don't even know where to start. Probably the one that sticks in my head the most is the time we were fishing down at the rifle range and we had a little aluminum boat and we were catching a bunch of catfish that weekend and and he was just tying stringer to stringer to stringer because we were going to have catfish fry and and the game warden showed up and he asked if we were having any luck and he said absolutely not none he ain't had none all weekend and in the meantime the back of the boat's going back and forth and the fish are splashing and the game warden says well you guys have a good day he got in his pickup and left and dad said i was just joking i would have showed him the fish <laughs> then there's many memories of from going to porter brothers and seeing uncle al and i mean that's kind of where I get my junk collecting habits from is him and my uncle and tore down lots of buildings together, built lots of things. And thanks to my dad, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. Anyone else? I feel obligated to say something, but I have to be careful because I get the distinct impression that he's listening, so I better be careful what I say. But he uh, came to the farm and helped quite a bit and bring his kids and stay in the camper or a tent. And uh, he always thought he was getting into trouble by breaking machinery and so on, but it was nothing major. But. He always, even though he's nine years younger than me, he always felt like a kid to me instead of somebody closer to my age. But no matter what he did wrong on the farm or, or break, wouldn't, wouldn't uh, make up for his personality. It was just fun to have him there and help on the farm. And uh, I'll miss him too. I'll add to that story, one of my favorite stories, I call him Uncle Johnny, he would tell me was how he would get into so much trouble on the farm and he'd say, and your dad would get so mad at me. <laughs> and then he'd give his great laugh. And that's what I'll miss the most about him is his laugh. <laughs> we were trying to find a video of him laughing last night, but it is an unforgettable laugh. Um, the word I would describe him with was, would be um, exuberance. He always had such exuberance for life. He, if it weren't for his car accident that resulted in a lot of his health problems, he, I think, would have still been the Johnny I knew growing up. Always busy building something and I swear every time we got to his house, he would smile really big and go, ha, <laughs> and lift his hands up in the air. And he was just so happy all the time. I know he had depressing days and hard days, but you wouldn't know it. And he never felt like he needed an invite or permission to come over. He would just come and want to know how I was doing and sharing the joy every time I had a baby. And 
come and hold it. And if we had a cotton candy stand, he was there. <laughs> he would sit in the hot sun, sweating for hours, eating as many cotton candies as he would get. And I'm just so grateful for his support and his love. Anyone else? Anyone else? We will have the next song. On Friday afternoon, as I met with the family to plan this service, they picked out three scripture lessons, two of which we read on the day that John passed away at the hospital. The first one is recorded in the book of Psalms, the 23rd chapter. 
The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then from the book of Revelation, the 21st chapter, beginning with verse 1, a description of heaven for us. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among people. He will live with them as their God, and they will be his people. And God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Sorrow and crying and pain will be no more. For the things we know here have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. Those who conquer will inherit these things, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. And then from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 39 and 40. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This indeed is the will of my Father, that all who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Here ends our scripture readings for today. We will have the song, Jealous of the Angels.
Let us all pray. <coughs> Lord God, we thank you for giving John to love and to live with here on this earth. We ask, O oh Lord, that you send your spirit to us to comfort us. As we look at your words in the scriptures that you gave to us, help, us, help to give us peace in our hearts. We ask that you would be with us this day, that you would comfort us, that you would wrap your loving arms around us. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would assure us that one day we will be together, living in joy and peace forever and ever. Amen. Dear family and friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. What are your memories of John? Today, as you remember him, each of you remember different memories that you shared with him. Times when you laughed together. Times when you did things together. And yes, even those times when you cried together. Today, as you remember him, you bring him close as you remember. The stories and the times are precious to you. But even though these memories are vivid in your mind, there's still a loss that you feel because he has been taken from you. As you feel your loss today, and as hopeless as death looks, there is hope. And that hope comes in the person of Jesus. Jesus, who gave his life so that we can have another life, eternal life with Jesus and our loved ones. And we don't achieve this by our actions. We don't achieve this by what we do or accomplish. But rather, we achieve it simply because Jesus gave his, gave his life on the cross for each one of us. There are many passages in the Bible that give us hope. And one of the passages is the 23rd Psalm. The Psalm is a place we can turn to and find words that give us hope and where we can be comforted. It has given comfort to many people throughout the ages as they have felt the hurt of losing loved ones. The familiar words of this psalm are often read when we lose someone we love or when we face hardships or tragedies in our lives. As we think about this psalm, it is perhaps one of the best known chapters in all of the Bible. Its message is one of comfort and hope for us as we travel through this life on our way to heaven. The life we leave, this psalm tells us, is like going through a dark valley. We can't see what's ahead for us, but this psalm tells us that we are not by ourselves. Someone is by our side, and he is there to guide us through the dark valleys of life. That someone is Jesus. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and they know me. Jesus is our shepherd, and we are members of his flock. And he guides us, and he protects us. And it takes a special kind of person to be a good shepherd. A shepherd has to love his work. But above all, a shepherd has to love his sheep. He has to love his sheep enough to want to be with them all of the time. And he has to love his work enough to be willing to lay down his life 
for the sheep. Sheep are easy prey, and they need a shepherd to protect them. That's what God does for us. He's there to guide us even through the valley of the shadow of death, which is a term the psalmist uses to describe the time of trials and suffering that comes for all of us. In this psalm, we are given a beautiful picture of God, a God who is nurturing and loving, a God who is always with us, providing for our needs and protecting us from danger and harm. A God who walks with us even to the end to lead us through the door of death into eternal life. And so we give our thanks to God, God who provides us with all that we need in this life and in our next life. And we give thanks to God for John's life and the memories that you share of him. And God offers all of us here today his comfort and his love. And he provides for our needs now and into the future. God who will one day call us, all of us, to a better place to live with him and our loved ones forever. So let us give thanks to God for the long and fulfilling life that he gave to John and all the memories that you cherish. And we give thanks that he is at peace and dwells in the presence of our loving God and Savior forever. In closing, I'd like to tell you a story. It's a story that I've told many times that illustrates so well what death is like. It's a story that I relate to many, many times in my life. It's about a minister from Texas and an experience he had when he was traveling on a plane. When this minister was seated on that plane, he was seated to a well-known theologian, someone he recognized. As they were going to their destination, this theologian began began to tell this minister about how he had recently lost one of his young boys through death. The minister listened at this to this theologian and he listened to his story. Here's what he said. My son had come home from school one day with a fever and we thought it was nothing to worry about. We thought that it was just a bug he had caught. But what we didn't know was that it was very serious. When we finally took our boy to the doctor, the doctor informed us that he had meningitis. And he said, I don't think we can save him. And so this well-known theologian, loving his son as he did, told this minister that he had just sat by his boy. He just sat there. He was numb. It was the middle of the day, and this little boy was losing his strength, and his vision was getting cloudy. Then the boy said to his father, Daddy, it's getting dark, isn't it? I guess it's time for me to go to sleep, isn't it? The father said, yes, son, it's time for you to go to sleep. The theologian then said, my boy had a way of fixing his pillow until it was just right. And he fixed his pillow and laid his head on his hands and said, good night, daddy. I will see you in the morning. He then closed his eyes. And he passed from this life into heaven. After telling his story, this theologian didn't say anything else. He just sat there and stared out of the window of that plane for a long, long time. Then finally he looked back at this minister and he said, Sir, 
I can hardly wait till morning. I'm sure there is also a part of you today that can't wait till morning. When you will be reunited with your loved ones who have passed from this life. For John, it's morning. That is why we can stand in the midst of death and celebrate and give thanks to God. Dear members of John's family and friends, let the hope of the resurrection and the presence of God's loving arms hold you as you grieve and celebrate John's life. Amen. We will have this song one more day. Let us pray. O oh God, grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know your love. Give courage and faith to those who are sorrowing 
that they may have the strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. And now grant us grace to entrust John to your never-failing love, a love which sustained him in this life. Receive him into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor that you bear for all your people. Amen. Would you please join me as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we command your servant John. Acknowledge, we humbly ask you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Before we have our closing song, I want to tell you that John's burial will be tomorrow at 10 o'clock out at Fairview Cemetery for those of you that want to go at 10 o'clock tomorrow at Fairview Cemetery. Also, you're all invited to come downstairs for a lunch. The family has provided a lunch downstairs. Please come down and eat and have fellowship together. Please stand as we hear the song, Go Rest High on That Mountain. 